This is Authentic Analysis with AI and K, where we'll be discussing the most controversial crime cases from across the globe. As well as other important topics, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. With our competition, we had a competition um, asking people to engage with us to win um, a pack of eyelashes or a £10 Amazon voucher. At the end of this video, we're going to announce the winner of that competition. Yeah, so, thanks guys for you know liking the videos pictures and leaving a comment and the new subscribers so just stay tuned to the end of this video and we'll find out <clears throat> hi guys welcome back to authentic analysis um today we're going to be talking about graham frederick young otherwise known as the teacup poisoner he poisoned several of his victims with dangerous chemicals and substances Graham was born in Neesden in 1947 to Fred and Bessie Young. His mother Bessie died 12 weeks after Graham was born due to tuberculosis. When Graham's mother had passed away, uh, Fred Young, his father, was really torn up and, you know, heartbroken that this had happened. So I guess he couldn't deal with you know, being a single father, so he sent his he sent Graham to an aunt and uncle and he'd sent his sister Winifred to their their grandparents basically. So the family was split up but Fred remarried in nineteen fifty and he married married um, um a lady called Molly. And that's when the family were reunited. When uh Fred remarried and he brought his family back together you know, opposed that he, you know, he felt like he could be a family unit with somebody and have his kids all together. So they had moved to St Albans. Well, they didn't move to St Albans. Sorry, Fred had bought the uncle and aunt's house, and the aunt and uncle had left. And so, you know, basically, Graham was still living in the same house um, that he had been with his aunt and uncle. But now, instead of them, you know, the two people that he can like saw as parent parent figures but now replaced by his uh, dad and his stepmom and you know his sister had come back into the picture. So it was said that because Fred was now in a new family environment Graham has suffered like from separation separation anxiety and you know he was feeling really you know basically disheveled because he'd been separated from his aunt which you know he saw as a mother figure he had been with her you know from a young age so I guess this brought a lot of resentment from Graham to his stepmom and his father. Graham was described as antisocial. With other with kids like you know at his around his age. And he was also described as a peculiar child. When Graham reached secondary school age, he was obsessed with Doctor Crippen, who was a homeopath who killed his wife, who poisoned his wife. Actually, he was also um, obsessed, strangely, with. Adolf Hitler, you know, a child being obsessed with Adolf Hitler so close to the Second World War, you know, it was, it was all very strange. People noticed in his school, you know, like we said, how peculiar he was. He said that um, Graham didn't socialise with kids his age, but, you know, he would happily go to the park and socialise with pension, pensioners and sit down and talk with them. You know, maybe he thought, you know, he's, he was an old soul, maybe. So like AI said, he was taking an interest in Hitler and reading a lot of books and he was also interested in black magic and the occult um, and I think all of them, all of these all together played a factor into his mindset and you know, him committing his crimes, you know, that we're going to discuss. Graham told his school friends how much he hated his stepmother Molly um, once she found a vial of chemicals in his um, blazer. Yeah, acid and so I think it's something called ether. Yeah, it burnt a hole apparently in his, his blazer. Um, she also he also poisoned the mouse and she told him off about it. And that's when he wrote a note that said, "In love, in memory of Molly, R.I.P." And he left the note out for her to see. And around this time as well, it was said. This I guess this is. This was the beginning of Graham, you know, and his, well, his interest in, you know, poison. So basically around this time as well, 
it was said that perfume bottles and nail varnish was going missing in the home and you know they believed it was graham taking it but you know, i guess innocently and you know at, at that age at that age you know yeah kids teenager he was saying that you know he just liked the smell of it and that's why he, he was taking it but he you know innocent excuses to why these things were going missing you know this is, it was just the start of what he you know wanted to do really. graham was really good at chemistry he had a t talent for toxicology like one of his main interests so the, his family bought him a chemistry set he eventually grew out of his chemistry set at the age as he was getting older and was to experiment with new uh, the new chemicals that he was reading about at the age of 13 he was able to convince like, a local chemist that he was you know a lot older because of his you know extensive extensive knowledge on um, chemicals and toxicology so that's how he was able to you know purchase these poisons from from the stores um so he was able to obtain um antimony so antimony is um, a chemical that's used in batteries and digitalis and digitalis comes from a plant called foxglove i don't know why it's called foxglove but it's a chemical that's extracted from a pot plant that they call foxglove and arsenic you know what arsenic is, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> At this time, Molly had found out that he was purchasing poisons, you know, able to get them from a chemist. So, you know, he was using the excuse of that he found them outside of like, local chemists in the bins, he would take them from there. So one of the chemists that he got the poisons from, she took him to that chemist. I think it was uh, the chemist that was running it was M.E. Evans, I think. And... You know, she went there and, you know, basically said, you know, why are you sending him these poisons or sending him these chemicals? And, you know, she, you know, he was just like, you know, he apologised, but he said he assumed that he was a lot older than what he was. So basically, you know, with, with Graham, you know, this didn't stop him. He just basically moved to another chemist and just basically did the same thing there. Went there, you know, gave a different address and, you know, gave it his extensive knowledge on this, on the chemicals and and whatnot and the poisons that enabled him to be able to buy them after graham was armed with these dangerous poisons he picked his first victim who was his school friend friend pupil called christopher williams graham was poisoning christopher's food they were known to swap packed lunches and stuff like that so that's how graham was administering the poison to his so-called friend his poor friend Christopher Williams suffered headaches, stomach cramps and vomiting. Um, so I'm just going to read a quote that was taken from Graham's diary. Um, so without jumping the story too much, he ended up being getting sent away. We'll go into a bit more detail, but it's a bit relevant to what he said now. So in Graham's diary... He said, I have been interested in poisons, their properties and effects since I, I, I was about 11. I tried them out. I tried out one of them on my friend Chris Williams. I gave him two or three grams at school. It was probably on a cream biscuit or a cake. He was sick after taking it. Later, I gave him other doses, always on food. It's so mad. Like, obviously, he was a sick person, like poisoning. But he's really taking it seriously. I don't even know if he was sick. I just think he really knew what he was doing. He but he was obviously a messed up child. But I'm just saying, he was really clinical about his poisonings. Like, and I feel like we've said it before, but Kenneth was quite a good artist. Yeah. Um, you know, these are talented people, and just taking the wrong path. So Christopher was taking time off school, going to the hospital. Um, so. Graham couldn't really focus on the effects that the poisons were having on him. So um, it was said that he started to focus on his, his family because they were more close to home. And I think his first victim was his sister, Winifred. And um, unfortunately, she was poisoned too. And it's believed in food and in cups of tea. So he was making family cups of tea, poisoning the tea. And, getting the family sick and she also suffered similar 
symptoms of this poison, which were headaches, vomiting, stomach cramps. It's so hard to understand, like, from what I read about Graham and a little bit that he watched, I don't think he ever disliked his sister, so I don't understand why he would poison her. But the, yeah, I, I agree with you, but this is what I'm saying. It's like, it almost is like an experiment. Not justifying it, but it almost is like an experiment. Like, you know. He did call them guinea pigs in his diary. Well, yeah. So, yeah. You know, apparently he loved his family dearly, so I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe he's just doing it in case he did get caught and he didn't want to look too, too evil. <laughs> yeah, let me throw this in. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about Dr. Crippen or all these people. Do they ever. I don't know. These people, like, I guess Dr. Crippen, I'm not really 100% sure, and Harold. Do they say they care about their patients or they care about them when they do it? Um, I think they have to care to a certain extent, but there's a disconnect. I know they have to care, but do they, have they expressed that they've cared? Have we ever read that they care? That you know that they cared about their patients? Maybe not. Okay, no, Harold Shipman, I've never heard him say, do you know what? Yeah, I would never do this because I cared about my patients. He just never said anything, so. Yeah. <gasps> Can you shut the fuck up with trying to record a YouTube video? <laughs> a guy just literally walked into my car. He met. Graham poisoned his sister with Belladonna, otherwise known as Nightshade. And when I was reading about Nightshade, it's basically a plant, funnily enough, that is related to tomatoes and potatoes. So it's strange that it's poisonous, but because somehow it's in the family, same family of plants that we actually eat. So I found that quite interesting. Um, luckily, his sister survived the poisonous attacks, but obviously she was quite sick. Um, you know, Bella Donna's a nice name, you know. I'll probably give my kid a middle name. <laughs> <laughs> now that you know, yeah. <laughs> it'll be a sick character name. Yeah. Yeah, Belladonna, like a superhero. Yeah. But um, it was also said in the home that he was poisoning cups of tea. And it, was it... He would poison them, and I think maybe he would either forget which ones he's done. Um, So he wasn't sure if they were deliberate or, you know, just forgetting which ones he had done. So this could include him poisoning himself at times because he had said in his diary that he was sick as well. So he was basically probably just going on a mad one and just dumping poison wherever he saw cups of tea ready, not knowing that that tea was for him. <laughs> Do you think that's why he started keeping a diary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Must not poison himself. <laughs> not on Thursdays. <laughs> that's when I got after school club. It was hard to gauge because he said he didn't like her. He didn't, you know, he didn't like his stepmom when I get, which I guess because, you know, he's been separated from his dad and, you know, his mum had passed away. So, like, a new woman's coming into the situation. Mm -hmm. And, but then it's said at the same time, it's said from, I think, one of Graham's uncles had said that Fred, you know, which was Graham's dad, and Graham didn't have a close relationship at all. Um, he said that he didn't have time for him, he didn't spend time, you know, uh, with Graham so it caused a lot of resentment and they didn't you know he felt like there was a really cold relationship there um, so you know he didn't like his father he wasn't fond of his stepmother but then you know later down the line he said that he didn't mean to harm anyone well no he didn't mean to harm anyone I, I don't know <laughs> he didn't mean to harm them sometimes he did it depends how he felt on that day but his feelings you know I'm, it's not 100% concrete how he feels, felt about the stepmom for sure minus the thing that he said as a kid but I don't know as a kid it's kind of hard to gauge to see realise how he feels when he was a bit older but you know what I mean I know this is a bit random yeah but something you said just made me think when I was a kid um, I was in Grenada and one of the older boys asked me to look after this wheel it was a tyre actually not a wheel and he, I think he was a mechanic or his dad was a mechanic anyway so my granddad's house where we were where we were staying was right at the top of a hill so I've got this wheel and I'm a kid like I'm like eight years old and he's asked me to look after this wheel and I'm like I want to look after the wheel but I also want to see what happens if I let the wheel go down the hill mm -hmm. so I let the wheel go down the hill out of curiosity he turned to me and was like what are you doing and I was like oh sorry sorry and I acted like 
acting like, oh, it was an accident. But well, really, it? in my heart, I just wanted to see. Do you think it's like that? Obviously, that's a different level because yeah. that's a childish thing that you can get away with. It. But do you think it was like that? Like, I don't I mean, really I mean, want to kill my family, but I just, my desire to see what these poisons do is such a strong thing do you think it was like that or yeah no i think it's like that like it's just like the other way around obviously there's like you said there's levels our level would be like raw yeah. you get so angry like oh raw i could really kill her not not yeah not that, um, the same That's we all say thing. it but then you know deep down our good side good side overpowers <laughs> that as opposed to somebody else whose brain might be wide a bit different yeah definitely definitely so april 21st 1962 Fred had found Molly at home in a lot of agony and was suffering from stomach pains. And it was basically said that Graham was um, had been giving her antimony at first, and because he had been put in like you know small doses, um, I think non-fatal. What he read was non-fatal amounts in the tea, so they had built up a tolerance, which probably may be a reason why the sister hadn't passed away, or what any of the family members inside the house. So you know how you know how bad that sounds. The fact that you're developing a a tolerance for poison that's that's terrible. And um, because I guess results had for him had not been you know going quick enough, he had switched to thallium, and you know that one for her was fatal. Yeah. Um. Apparently, he was watching motionless while Molly was in the garden when Fred, his father, found Molly. He was just watching from a distance, motion, um, emotionless. So, yeah, just shows you what type of person, what type of psyche he had. So, thallium is known as a heavy metal. And it's obviously dangerous if it's consumed by humans. It's also known to be odourless and tasteless. Um, so, that's how he was able to slip it into Molly and other people's food and tea without them noticing said on April 21st 1962 um, when Fred had found Molly in the pain she was rushed to, rushed to hospital and she had passed away from the poisoning from the antimony and the thallium. It was said at um, Molly's funeral that you know I'm not 100% sure but I think he might have you know poisoned some of maybe the snacks the food that was at the funeral and there was a people had started to become ill while the funeral was taking place um i think one including his dad as well i mean how they're they're writing this how you're reading how you're understanding like this guy seems like he has poisons for days like how it's just it just seems like he's got poison everywhere how was he able to obtain this i know they said about oh he so a kid has loads of knowledge about a chemical and you don't think to no but how's he affording this though Again, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> they think that they have a concern that maybe she took him to the chemist and then he's still giving him pocket money. Cut it off. Well, he wasn't working by then. Unless he was doing like, he had like little jobs here and there. But I just, yeah, he's I still, he's still young. Cheap. He's still like a teenager. He's still 13, 14 at this stage. So yeah, yeah, chemicals must have costed a little bit at least. Well, the Benadonna, it seems like a natural thing. So it depends on what form. I, I don't know what it, what it comes in if it is that expensive. After the death of Molly Young, Fred, Graham's father, was experiencing similar symptoms again, headaches, stomach cramps, vomiting. Um, Fred believed that it was something to do with his son, but he didn't think it was malicious. He just thought that, you know, he was playing with the chemistry set and maybe he wasn't, maybe he wasn't washing out the instruments that he was using or the cups that he was using in the house so it was just thought that he was you know it was an accident and so his father told him to to be more careful oh, okay makes sense um but you know this you know i'm sure a good few people might now had concerns because the, the stepdad and the stepmom not the stepdad his father and the stepmom before she had passed away had concerns so I'm not really sure how many concerns you need to be like, okay, is there a chance mm. he's doing this intentionally? But yeah, but I feel like you wouldn't want to think the worst of your son. Do you know what I mean? Like all these things are tying in, and you're thinking, mm, but you wouldn't want to think the thought, worst. But he blamed, but Fred blamed his son for his mom, the mother's death. Origin, not not the stepmom, his his original mum. When he said, when the, well, the uncle said that. Fred held resentment against him and that's why he moved him no, away. No, but he was only three. He was only three months old. He's, he, 
He couldn't have been. He couldn't have been actually responsible. Not actually responsible, mom. but he felt like because me, because I'm saying because he, when the mum died, he was the one. She gave birth to him, that caused her death, because the complications. Right. So he was angry with his son that oh because you're here. But, but was he angry though, or did he just feel guilty? Well, I'm saying based on what the uncle had said. Okay. Of, so what, the, of what I read. So the uncle would, like said that Fred. Felt. actually felt resentment towards the child yeah, like that's really he, messed up because that's why he, he that could have been one of the reasons why he feels like this so are you basically saying that he, a friend deserves to be poisoned no i'm not <laughs> I'm... well okay so it's a rapid gypsy but that was a great <laughs> okay cool um yeah no i just feel that's important information because Obviously, he liked the chemicals, and there's loads of factors. Like with Dennis Nielsen, he saw his, his granddad, you know, and that could have been a spark that led him to go on to do other things. Watch our episode on Dennis Nielsen. We'll go into more detail there. Obviously, we've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again right now. But so now I'm thinking his feelings of guilt placed on him by his father is part of the spark that with the chemistry obsession and Hitler of course <laughs> um, and the occult and the black yeah. magic <laughs> and the loneliness <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's factors that could, could have contributed to what, why he did what he did and you know I don't want to put murderers on a hierarchy or a pedestal but it's like okay you've got the murderers that would you know actually go out and, and commit like bodily harm to someone then you've got the ones that are like okay they'll, they're more cunning and they will do things from a distance and they don't want you know their victims to know that they're the ones that are committing it so he's not at that stage where okay he wants to be infamous and he wants to be a killer and whatnot but he's not at a stage where he's like okay i'm gonna use my i guess my intelligence and what i know to harm these people i, I think at this point he was like disconnected from the family and, yeah, um, maybe felt like the black sheep, maybe. Yeah. After the chain of events and, you know, people around Graham becoming ill, a lot of concerns were raised around Graham and, and what he was doing. And this is when the school teacher, you know, what they called the police. So they found toxic chemicals and literature regarding poison in, poisoning in his school desk. Graham Frederick Young was eventually sent to a police psychiatrist. And when the psychiatrist questioned him, the psychiatrist realised how much he knew about toxicology and chemicals. And it was quite clear to that police personnel that he was definitely involved in all the poisonings that were happening in the school and at his home. May 23rd, 1962, Graham Young was arrested. Graham admitted to poisoning his sister, his father and Christopher but he didn't get convicted of killing his mother, stepmother Molly, because due to a lack of evidence and the fact that she had been cremated. Graham Young was sentenced to 15 years. Um, well, not sentenced, he was committed to Broadmoor for 15 years, I guess, to, you know, like, recommendation, you know, to get him better and back into society. Apparently, Graham was the youngest person ever to be admitted to Broadmoor since 1885. Which I guess he got his, um, you know, he was so obsessed with being infamous, but, you know, I guess he was on, on a roll then. Well, yeah. Um, at this time he was there, it was said that Graham Young was writing to his friend, Christopher, do not ask His him. friend, the friend that he tried to poison. Yeah, well, he loved him, but... <laughs> I don't understand their relationship. They haven't really gone into details about, I don't know if Chris responded back. Well, in his mind, you think they were friends, but, you know, clearly if he wrote to him, they had his address, or maybe it was his last known address. But he was just, you know, writing a casual letter to say, you know, how are you? I'm fine. You know, can you believe that I'm getting 15 years in this place? But yeah, the... I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you put poison on my Gary Baldy biscuit. On your what? Gary Baldy biscuit. I knew I should have chosen another biscuit. I fucked up that joke, didn't I? <laughs> What's a Gary Baldy? It's a biscuit. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what kind of biscuit is it? Okay. Okay. We, okay, we're doing this. Um, in addition, 
Graham, when he was committed to Broadmoor, they wanted him to, you know, recover. So they put him in like, you know, group meetings, you know, I guess to talk with other people in Broadmoor. And he they wanted him to take sedatives. Yeah, sedatives, yeah. <laughs> he shunned the idea of doing like the uh, group meetings, but his dad had signed a letter to say, you know, if you need to, you can give him a, a electric convulsive therapy, you know, like electric shock. Um, I think it shocked the brain, you know, I guess to rewire it. That's it, like really basic, basic terms. Mm. And it's supposed to be like, you know, a type of treatment to help you get better. But there's never really been any proof to say that those type of therapies work. Yeah, I'm quite sure that that's a failed mission at this point oh, in yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Well, unless they still do it, I don't know about it. But... <laughs> Undercover. <laughs> um, when Graham Frederick Young was in Broadmoor, Apparently, he still continued to practice poisoning people. A man named John Berridge passed away in Broadmoor. And Graham admitted that he poisoned John. But Graham admitted that he extracted cyanide from laurel bushes that were apparently found in the grounds of Broadmoor. Why are you keeping poisonous plants? But is it a natural thing though? Maybe he just, I think he just knew too much. Yeah, I think he, he just knew too much. It's like, you know, he, he knew put, where to get poisons from everywhere, sorry. So he put a caveman somewhere and he can find in a shelter and whatnot. So you, you could probably strip him bare of everything. You could probably put him in a room with just a blanket and he'll find a way to extract poison from that. <laughs> so. They didn't take Graham's confession seriously and John Berridge's death was ruled as a suicide. In Broadmoor, Graham met Moore's killer Ian Brady also and they had similarities in the fact that they loved Hitler as you do <sighs> and the fact that they were both killers so mm -hmm. they became buddies apparently uh, well that buddies and you know supposedly in, in one source it would say that Ian Brady was obsessed with uh, Graham Young but it was said that Graham Young didn't feel the same way I mean yeah. You know, not to prejudge, but because I think Ian Brady, you know, was committing acts. I think it was the feet girls as well, but he had committed acts, you know, before he got sent there against young boys as well. So maybe... Mm. He's like, I'm saying. better than you, I only poison people. <laughs> um, I use my, my brain. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been introduced to the serial killer hierarchy. <laughs> other members of staff and other inmates believed that Graham was tampering with their food and drink. I don't know if he, I mean, it's most probable that he was, but it's also probable that they just thought that he was. He probably wasn't oh, trying like to poison a, everybody, like paranoid sort of thing. Oh, he's a poisoner. He's I'm, I'm poisoning. ill. He, he yeah, is yeah, it was him. Transfer me to somewhere else. In 1970, eight years into Graham's sentence, a Dr. Unwin believed that Graham was cured. Okay and that he could be rehabilitated into society. So um, he was released. It was recommended June 1970 that he would be released, as AI said, um, because he had seen that he was being cured. Um, and at that time period of him being released, he said that he had, well, it was said that he informed a psychiatric nurse that he intended to kill one person for every year he had been in Broadmoor. That comment was recorded on his file, which then he was released. But actually, they released him anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so basically it didn't matter. So he was actually released on February 4th, 1971. And we are going to stop it here. So this is part one of Gray and Frederick Young, the teacup poisoner. Come back next week for part two. So the winner of the com competition is Gino GGB. Um, Instagram profile be in this video. So congratulations, Gina. Um, just to let you know, <laughs> um, we didn't re even reach our target. <laughs> our target was, what was it? 500. 500. But we, we still gave away the gift that we promised we'd give away. So, um, yeah. Just call, send us a, a DM and we will, you know, talk and leave get information how you get your prize. So, you know, we're happy to... Yeah, let me not be too... Let us know whether you want the eyelashes or the... <laughs> <laughs> you know?
um, you yeah, have run competitions here and there, but you know, we need you guys to like be a bit more interactive to know that we're not just you know speaking to ourselves. Yeah. But um, I'm glad that you see you guys enjoy the enjoy the content so far, yeah. and stay tuned for part two.